Hi everyone, I'm Judy Niemeyer and I'm going to teach you how to do the palm leaf um, block that's part of our Stella Maris uh, quilt collection. So I have my instructions in front of me and I'm going to do a really quick review with you so that you can kind of catch up. Um, the first thing I want to go through is you should have your fabric cut um, before you start and you should also have all of your paper piece, pieces cut out and all the template layout sheets cut out. And now what I want to do is start going through some organization skills here for you um, so that before we start cutting that we really know what we're doing as far as color is concerned. So one of the things that's going to, that you should have, if you have a quiltster, um, if you have quiltster, then you were able to print out an actual cheat sheet here that tells you exactly what you have to cut, and it tells you what the fabric number is, okay? If you don't have quiltster, you're gonna have to go into your instructions and you're going to have to look for some pictures that tell you where your fabric goes. And on the back part of this booklet, you can actually see there's a graphic here that tells you where the colors go. And there's also a graphic on page one called the color layout. And it's right below your yardage chart. Okay, so you need to kind of do some figuring, cutting and pasting and figuring out where you want to put your colors. And then you're going to assign the fabric number to the color that you've chosen. So I'm going to go through that very quickly and show you how that's done. Now, another thing that you can do is um, you can actually print out a piece and do some cut and paste on an extra piece and just photocopy something from the pattern that's bigger if you want as well. When I get my colors sorted out and what I designed this on Quilster so I knew exactly what I had to have, it also tells me exactly what I need to do for my cutting. And I've already pre-cut all of my fabric strips according to my instructions. So we're going to lay these out. Then I'm going to show you some other tips and tricks that you can do. And you on your yardage chart, if you have more than one color per unit, then you need to separate those colors by saying um, fabric J1A, fabric J1B, fabric J1C, because you can have up to eight colors when you're actually making this block. Uh, so I actually am going to do two colors with the fabrics that I'm demoing with today. So I'm going to have a J1A and a J1B. When I get to my fabric J2, I'm going to have two colors as well. So I'm going to mark them as an A and a B is also. When I get to fabric J3, I'm only using one color. And fabric J4, I'm only using one color. So you can tell by my swatches here what I have. And then, then I took those swatches a little bit further, and I came down where my cutting instructions start, and I also put swatches along there as well at the top. And so fabric J3, I have a swatch of fabric, and J4, I have a swatch of fabric. Then, after I do that, I like to take my foundation papers and just look at my foundation papers and compare it to this color layout. And I want to make sure that where I'm putting my fabrics is correct. Because I have a tendency to, when I switch dark fabrics and light fabrics, I look at light and I always say, oh, that's my background. But sometimes I like to sew the lighter fabric in what I would call an accent fabric. So I don't distinguish between light and dark as one being accent and one being uh, my background. And this is a good example with this fab um, unit here because my spikes which I would consider an accent, are actually my lightest color. So what I did here is I pasted a little color on my spikes, 
And then my background, which is the darker color, it, I pasted a, a swatch there. And then I go back over and I'm going to Fabric 3 and just making sure that my Fabric 3 corresponds to the instructions and my light color corresponds to where it tells me those pieces are as well. All right. Now I'm going to show you another unit. These are my J1 units. And these are the ones I have the two colors on. So I've split my papers into two groups. One group, I'm going to have my fabric J1A, which is my dark fabric. And then it, it pairs up to fabric J2A, which is a, a lighter fabric here. And I've done the same here. My lighter fabric is J1B, and then my darker accent fabric is uh, J2. Um, that one's actually J2B, and I have it marked wrong on my paper. There we go. That's why you want to double check all of these. Now there's one more place that we're going to go with our instruct um, little swatches. And that's going to be with our template. So this particular template piece goes with my J1 and I have my A and B fabrics on here. And then this template piece, these are for the vein and I have my J2A, which is J2A, and my J2B, which is J2B. So I'd only really marked one piece wrong, but I caught it by going through all of um, this little, whatever you want to call it, tip to start with. I'm just going to double check these to make sure. So these are my background fabrics, and we can always, when you're looking at your template layout sheets, if it has a little hatching, I normally consider that an accent, but that accent can actually be a light color, dark color, medium color, whatever you choose. And you can take some blocks, and you can have half of them be white and half of them be black, and switch them back and forth. So... I like to put those same little swatches on these pieces. And since I only have one, and I'm looking here, so I have my hatching goes to the hatching on my foundation unit, and those match up. The background pieces go with the background pieces on here. And if you're unsure about what goes where, just read your foundation papers. So this says template layout sheet number one, and then if I look at the section numbers, it says section one, and it says template J21. And then a section three is on here. So I know these pieces belong to that grouping, those light unhatched sections. And these belong to the darker ones. After I get that done, then I like to go through, and I like to start sorting my um, papers to my fabric before I start cutting. And it just kind of keeps me from getting things mixed up. When I cut out all of my fabrics, I followed my instructions here. And Quilster allows you to print up these little labels here. You can just print them. And then I just glue these on with my um, repositionable glue. And then I can pull them right off when I'm ready to pull them off. So if we look, my J1 fabric, I'm supposed to have two um, four and a half inch strips. Well, I only have one strip, and that's because I have two colors. And this one is a J1. And so I'm going to mark this. My J1 is... Um, my J1A, this is my A fabric, and this one is the B fabric, okay? And then we're going to go to the J2, and I'm supposed to have two strips of that. And so I have to figure out which one of these is my A fabric and B fabric. And if I look at my little sample here, I can tell this is my A fabric, and this is my B fabric. And then we're going to go to J3, 
and I'm supposed to have four five inch strips and I've cut my four five inch strips. My J4, I have four five inch strips for that. So I'm all ready to separate. So this is a J1 and a J1. Those are my J1s. A and B, this is J2, A and B. And these fabrics go with these template pieces right here and the templates. So we're just going to clip them together. And those also go in bag J1. And I'm going to show you in my book, I actually put a, a package here and it says bag J1. So I'm just going to go ahead and put these pieces in here for now. And then my bag J2 is going to have all of this fabric in there. I'm going to start with um, the in instructions that we're going to work on. I'm going to start with uh, bag 2 today and or for this video because this really covers my paper piecing. And then we'll come back and do bag J1 because that one's going to cover the curved piecing that we have to do. So let's take our pieces here and I'm going to set my book kind of up there out of the way and I'm going to grab the template layout sheet that goes with the light fabric and I'm going to grab the layout sheet that goes with this fabric. I'm going to turn the page to fabric J3 and I'm just going to And then we're going to open up our strips. You want all your strips stacked right side up. And after you get that done, you can take and get rid of that little label. We have everything stacked pretty close. We always give you guys extra room on your um, fabric strips so that you can loosely stack them. You also have it extra room on your uh, template layout sheets. so. If our strip says that it's five inches, it normally means the layout sheet is probably a little bit less, somewhere between four and a half inches to um, four and three quarters. If you have a fold in there, you probably should press that out. That's good enough. Now I'm going to look at my instructions, and it tells me to place this piece on top here. Now that's going to move on me, so what I want is I'm going to get my repositionable glue, and we're going to just run this on the back. We're going to let it dry for about... 30 seconds, and we're going to find all of our paper clips. And then we're just going to lay this on top, the piece that's on the, the very top of our stack. And now I'm going to grab a ruler. I'm going to double check this end, and I'm going to move that. A little bit further in. I like to look at my um, graphics and the pattern right here because it's going to tell you whether or not you have a lot any extra room to move things around. So if it's a really tight fit in the graphic then that means you've got to cut really really close on that. This one I have plenty of room so we're just going to take this and we're going to Put a ruler right down along the edge of that, and we're going to make our first cut. 
I have to have eight layers of fabric under this layout sheet. So we're going to flip this fabric over, and then we're going to place this up on top like that. Just give yourself some room. Don't worry about them being stacked perfectly. There's lots of room there. Now we're going to cut. And we're going to place this, start a stack here of extra fabric. Now we're going to grab our paper clips. And I'm going to put one paper clip on each one of those section templates. We're going to look at our templates, and on our template layout sheet, it's going to there's some cut lines, and those cut lines basically are in the order in which you cut because everything, the cut lines kind of overlap. So you need to follow that. This one actually says cut line one. And I'm going to use my add a quarter ruler to cut these because it has a lip and it balances better on those paper clips. So this is my cut line one. And then I'm just going to set this aside. And if you look at your foundation papers, a lot of times your first cut line will be the last piece that's, you're going to sew on to your paper so you can actually take that piece and stack it and right on top. And so we're just going to start a stack here for all of these. This one is cut line two. And this very first one was for section 11. This one is actually for section 9. We're going to stack that on top. And when I stack, I match the sew sides. And the sew side is printed on your foundation paper, so just find those. That's for section 7. This is section 5. This one's 3. And this is for section 1. So we're going to set those aside. Then we're going to do the same thing with this unit for this template layout sheet, I should say. So we're going to open everything up. You want all your right sides up. So in the next one, it tells me that I have to have, I have my four or five inch strips, everything stacked right side up, and now I'm going to place this piece right here, and we want our repositionable glue. I'm going to place that right along here. I'm going to grab a few more paper clips. Cut right along that edge there. And then we're going to flip this over. And I'm just going to go to the other end. That way I don't have to press that centerpiece right now. And then we're going to take our excess, put it up here for now. Paper clips.
Let's grab our add a quarter ruler and we're going to place it on line one. And line one is for section 12. Line two. Line three. Four, and line five. So this is section four and section two. All right. So now we're ready to stack these in the sew order. And in your instructions, and I'm actually on page um, three, right at the top, there's information there on how to stack these pieces. Pause. In your stacking information, it's going to tell you to start with the very largest section number. So look at both of your stacks, and the largest section number happens to be section 12. So section 12 is on the bottom, then you're going to add section 11, and then we're going to go to section 10, section 9, section 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, three, two, and one. Now we're ready to start paper piecing. Now I am going to stop for a second and we're going to go back and do the cutting for um, unit J1 and we're going to set these aside but I do want to add a little bit of information here when you guys are going through bag by bag to um, put everything together, it really is best if you'll leave everything, don't cut in, anything apart like what I have it cut here until right before you're ready to use it. Because if you cut everything apart and then you set it aside and put it in a box and come back two years later, you're going to go, what is this? And by then, you don't know whether your pieces are still going to be in order. So I always like to cut right before I start my paper piecing. But I want to get through the rest of the cutting in the demo, so we're going to set these aside right now. And we're going to go back to bag J1. Flip this over. We're going to go back to page one and it fa says fabric J1. And remember, we have two different fabrics that we're working with for J1. And we need to keep those in order. So J1A we want to be on the top and J1B will be on the bottom. I'm going to take the little strips off. And then we're going to find our template. Repositionable glue. Now what I'm going to do is I need to look at my gr graphics to see how those are actually fit on here. And this is actually, this is 12 inches, so I'm not going to get four of these if I just cut it here. So I have to 
set the cutting up. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. So I'm just going to cut down along this, and then I'm going to fold this piece back. Now I can take this and set this one in here. So you have to be a little careful not to get that cut too far. And I cut a little bit far on it, but I'll be okay. We're going to slice along here. And I'm going to reposition the salvage on this other side. And I think this time I'm going to take this and cut this way. Then I can fold this back. Flip this piece over. And we're good. So you can tell that there's not a lot of leftover on these pieces. So that's why you want to look at your graphics. And sometimes you just have to reposition your template a little bit to figure out how you're going to cut before you start your cutting. All right. So now I actually have um, fabric A on the top and fabric B on the bottom. And I separated my paper, so I had four A's and four B's. So I'm going to actually separate my fabrics at this time, and I'm going to put my B fabric, my A, this is B, this is A, B, A, and B. Because it's a little easier for me to keep track of it this way. Now we're going to just stack them, and when I do my paper piecing on these, I can actually just do four of the dark brown ones and four of my other ones. So we're going to set those aside. Going to get rid of these scraps. We have no scraps left on that. Now we're going to grab this piece, and again I'm going to put my A on the top. We're going to put our template layout sheet, and we're going to turn the page. And each one of these is, this is going to give me two cuts, and I have to have four. So this is going to give me one. So I'm going to get two from each one of these. And right at the moment, I'm going to actually switch this, then I won't have to switch them later. And I'm going to put both of my B's on the bottom. Put our repositionable glue.
Now, I have a curved ruler, and I'm going to use this curved ruler to cut these out. So we're going to take this. I'm just going to... And what I can do is just swing this ruler right along that curved line. And then we're going to do the inside of that curved line. All right, so let's take the two. B fabrics and we'll put this template on the two B fabrics. And we're going to take those. Put those underneath them. And then we're going to put our two a fabrics together. So now I have four A's together and four B's together. And we're going to set those just like that. And now the cutting's done. So I'm going to place these back into my bag J1. And then we're going to take a short break, and then I'm, get organ I'm going to get organized for my paper piecing, and I'll come back. Okay, I told you guys that we were going to do the paper piecing first, so we're going to start with unit J2. And the instructions are on page 3 in this little booklet I'm working on. Um, I want to explain the paper piecing process that we use. Basically, in every pattern, the steps for paper piecing are identical. And if you took one pattern and opened up another pattern and another one and another one, you're going to find that pretty much to up to step eight or nine, everything is identical word for word as far as all of the text and so once you learn how to paper piece it's just repetitious it doesn't you don't have to have your instructions there to go through all your paper piecing steps however you should always read through it before you start the paper piecing because sometimes I'll have some information in there about when you need to sew some TRP lines, which are our transition points. And there also might be information in there on where you have to stop before you add some curved piecing. And so every once in a while, there's some additional information that you really need to read through before you start. That way, as you get going on your paper piece, and you'll know, oh yeah, I was supposed to stop on step five or line seven. There's all kinds of little things that I add on occasion. So on this particular block, we really don't need to do any stopping. So I'm going to go through the basics and, um, and I'm going to do section one and section two, and then we're going to put on one section three. Then I'm going to stop the video and I'll come back and show you the final 
finished piece because you don't need to watch me for four hours paper piecing all of these, all right? So I'm just going to give you a review. On the foundation papers, first thing you need to do is find where it says section one, which this is my section one here. My uh, fabrics are all stacked in order. And um, the other thing you need to do is in your instructions, if you're new to paper piecing and you haven't done very much of this, there's a paragraph that tells you to trace the back side of all of the dashed lines. So if you look on your foundation papers, you have a solid line and then you have a dashed line. And the solid line's always marked line one, line two, line three, and we mark everything as you move forward to the last section. You also need to look at your section numbers because sometimes your section numbers will start in the center. Sometimes they'll start the second piece in. It all depends on how I want to control the way the units, the fabric is actually pressed on the back side. Um, some of our foundation papers will, will also tell you on your last line that it's a repress line. A repress line means that I'm trying to set your blocks up when you sew them for something to be um, opposing seams. And so if I want to do opposing seams, a lot of times I'll have to tell you to repress the very last seam. Now you can't repress any of the other seams, but you can always repress the last seam and that will give you opposing seams when you join two blocks. So pay attention, always find your section number. This one is very uniform. It starts section 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All right, so there's nothing we really need to pay attention. I've actually gone through and marked the back side, and what this does is it gives us our section numbers on the back as well. We're going to start with the very first piece, and I'm going to add all eight pieces onto this because I want you guys to see how I line everything up. So this one, we have our very first paper here. This is my template, and if you look, this dashed line, there's a solid line on my template, there's a dashed line. The dashed line is actually the finish size, or not the finish size, but the cut size of your unit. The solid line is actually the finish size. So when we're trying to put the very first piece on, what we want to do is take this template and we're going to place it on, if you have a light table, you can actually match the position in which it's supposed to set underneath there right onto that paper. So if you look at that, this dashed line is matching up to the dashed line around section one, and then it also matches up to the outside edge of the paper. Okay, so now I know exactly how I have to position all of those fabric pieces. If I'm not using a lot of different colors, so everything's the same color, I can just pick up the very first piece. This is actually my right side. I need to flip the very first piece over, and it's the only, the, the section one is always flipped over, so I flipped it over. Now I have my wrong side facing up. We're going to use our repositionable glue, and we're going to put glue just on the back side of section one. Don't get the glue under section two or section three. So be very careful when you're using this, and just rub it a little bit under section one. And then you're going to take this, and you're going to match up your paper and place it right on there like this. Okay, now I can take my next piece flip it over, and we're just going to leave the lid off while I do this, and then put a little bit of glue. Now, this repositionable glue is supposed to dry a little bit, so it's really okay if you'll actually t go through and put the glue on the back side of your papers like this. That gives it a chance to get a little bit sticky before you put it onto your fabric. Okay, so 
so I'm done with this. Now all I have to do is just take this piece, place this on top, the next piece, place it on top. Just keep things as straight as you can as you add each one of these. Okay, and then my last piece of fabric, I'm going to reach down to the bottom of my pile and pull this off of the template and put that onto the fabric. So now I'll have all eight pieces. I like to keep a hold of these because if I make a mistake, I still have the template there to go cut an extra piece of fabric for it, okay? Now I'm going to take these pieces and I'm going to roll them around like that. And I'm going to find line one. I'm going to place my fold template. And this is just a piece of template plastic. You're going to place that straight edge right on line one. Fold back the foundation paper. And you're going to trim a quarter inch seam allowance. And then we're going to set this aside. I'm just got to crease that line. I didn't get very much glue on that. I hope that these all stay on. Fold back. Trim. Pick this up and stack it. After I remove the paper, the template plastic, I like to crease that line. It just makes them stack a little bit better for me. Okay, I'm going to reach under my stack and pull the bottom one off because that's the one I drew all the lines on. And I'm going to bring it to the top of my stack. We're going to get rid of this scrap. I'm going to set the ruler away over there. Now we're going to pick up the pieces for section two. So remember, this area right here that's what we have to have fabric under and that's going to fit underneath this section so i'm going to take this and i'm going to lift my first piece and kind of get an idea of where that's got to set and the bottom of the paper is going to line up basically with that dash line there and once i know where that's supposed to be positioned then i can lift this up Put my fabric under there and basically put it back in the same position. So I'm going to actually move this template out of the way and I'm going to show you this is my section two area and I'm just going to draw on, on this so that you can 
see where I'm putting that dart. And this fabric has to cover this area. It doesn't have to cover anything else, just that spot right there. All right. So now that we know that we're on and we check the point here, and we're also checking the bottom, and I know I'm on there, then we're going to take the next piece and we're just going to set it and stagger it a little bit, pick this piece up and position it exactly the same way. And I can basically tell from looking at the bottom, as long as I have fabric at the bottom of my paper, I have it on because there's lots of excess room at the top. So we're just going to keep going. The other thing I want to show you is I'm holding on to the paper and the fabric because fabric isn't glued really tight because it's a temporary hold. And then I have these fingers loose here. I'm going to take those fingers and those are what's going to hold that fabric down on the table. And then I'm just going to slide this up and get that one positioned. And it's going to take a little bit of practice, but after you get started on this and you do a couple of these rounds, you'll get the hang of what you're doing. You'll also start understanding what you're trying to cover. But we have to have that fabric under section two. Okay, so we have everything labeled or stacked here. The next thing I want to do is show you a little trick where if you're new to paper piecing, it's hard to pick this up, get it to your machine without that fabric moving. So what I like to do is I take this fabric glue pin and I lift up the seam allowance, that excess fabric where we trimmed, and I just glue those edges. Then we pick up the next one. And I just have the glue right along the raw edges. And I do this with the paper on because that stops me from getting too much glue on the rest of my fabric. It just stays in the seam allowance. This glue dries really fast so you don't have to worry about glue in your machine or anything because by the time I get through my stack it's all dry and it holds together really well. It's also a washout glue so as soon as you wash your quilt that glue is going to dissolve in your quilt. Okay so now what happens is when I pick this up those pieces are glued to get there for me. Oh, we're ready to go to our sewing machine. We're going to pick the very first piece up and we're going to open up the paper and we're going to look at it and decide do we want to sew this direction or do we want to sew this direction. And I'm going to sew this direction because the paper is going to hang out that way and it won't bump my camera. So. I'm going to start right there, and before I go any further, this is my solid line, this is the sew line. I'm going to start about right here in front of that solid line, so it's going to be about four stitches in front of the, my sew line, and that's where I'm going to start sewing. I want to set my stitch length at about 1.8 to 1.9 and some machines you may have to go down to 1.5 it depends on what your machine is. You should have, I like using a size 70 needle and I like to use either a 50 weight or a 60 weight thread. Okay. And then you just need a regular foot, it can be a quarter inch foot, it can actually be a uh, just a number one foot that's not a quarter inch. And I need to find my foot pedal before I can sew. And there we go. 
And now we're going to sew. You're going to sew right off the paper. If you have a thread cutter, you can push your thread cutter and cut that paper. If you don't have a thread cutter, what you're going to do is get the next piece ready to run through, then lift your pressure foot, set the pressure foot down, Then we take the next piece, get this one ready to sew, lift the pressure foot, slide the thread off to the side, and then position your pressure foot. Now we're just going to cut all of our little pieces together, cut the threads in between, and restack them. Now we're going to go to the ironing board. Now, if you're doing one piece, you can actually go through the finger pressing process, but your iron's always going to give you more, the seam's going to be crisper, and it's going to be a lot tighter fit, and your fabric's not going to move, um, flip away from it because you've creased it, and it just holds better. You don't want to use a steam iron, or I sh I'm take that back. You don't want to use too much steam, but steam irons are great. I use steam for everything. I just, you, if you get too much steam on it, your paper is going to roll up in a ball. So I'm going to take this and move the cord, and I'm going to press into my seam. And my iron's not quite hot, so give me just a second to get that hot. It's being slow. <laughs> there we go. So we have our first piece pressed. And what I'm doing is I'm pushing right on those seams to make sure that I don't have any folds in there.
Okay, we have them all pressed now. And I'm just going to go over, so when you press these, you want to make sure that you don't get any folds. A lot of people will end up in there, get careless with their pressing, and they'll end up with a little fold there. And what's that, what happens is when you get ready to sew them together, all of a sudden you'll have your, your point will be like a half an inch longer than what it's supposed to be. So make sure that seam gets opened up and it's pressed tight. Now we're going to go through and we're going to show you some more tricks to the trade. So line two goes all the way from here to here. When I did my sewing, I stitched all the way up past that dashed line. So when I place this fold template on here and I press, I have to bring the fabric with it. So see how I brought the fabric? Then we're going to take and just rip that and see it ripped a little hole right there in that point. That's okay. It actually makes it easier to remove the paper. But this fabric has to lay flat in order for you to do your trimming. And now we're going to take this, we're going to place the add a quarter ruler, and we're going to trim a quarter inch seam allowance. And then we set this piece aside. And then we're going to grab the next one. Place it on line two, lift the, fa the fabric with the paper, fold it back, and then hold on to the paper so my fingers are right there holding on, and then I just take that fabric so that that will lay flat against the table, and then we put the outer uh, quarter on. And we continue doing that with all eight pieces, but I'm going to move forward and show you the next step. We'll just do a couple of these. Now we're going to take this piece, we're going to look at this and see where that section is. And on this piece I have that section drawn out. So this is section 3 right here. And I'm just going to color it in. so that you can see where section 3 sets. So I'll put the fold template on it, and then I'll put this on it, and then there's the bottom of section 3 right there. Now, if I look at my paper, it looks just like that. So that's where that fabric's going to go. So all we have to do is lift this up. This is my sew side, and this is the sew side, so you don't want to flip these pieces over. Just make sure that you're working with your sew side. And then all you do is just lift this and position it. Make sure that you have fabric past the bottom of the paper down here. And we have about a half an inch there. And then the other thing you should double check is place this along that line and fold everything back and make sure you have fabric along here. So we're centered really nice. So now I'm just going to finish my stacking. We put the next piece on. So if you didn't trace the back of all your papers, another thing you can do is actually open up your paper and follow the dash line and mark and just poke a hole with your pencil at these lines and points right there. Now when I flip it over, I can put my finger right at that. And I can make sure that I have about a half an inch on that side and about a half an inch on this side. And I have it positioned just like the one underneath. So I can actually just poke a hole in the paper to see where those points are that I have to have fabric under. And then we're going to continue with that until all of the paper piecing is done. And when it's all done, I'll show you a finished block. Here's one of our finished pieces. So now what I need to do is show you guys where the TRP lines are and how to trim it. I like to sew the TRP lines first. And this particular unit has one, two, three, four, which means it's going to match up to other units in four different places. All right. So since this is a foundation unit, we can actually just come in and we start sewing here, here, 
and then I'll swing over and grab the other four. So watch me do this. Actually, I'm going to start on the other end. We're going to start right here. The stitch length on this really doesn't matter. If you get it, I like, most of my instructions tell you a 2.8. I actually prefer about a 2.2 now because if I do an 8, 2.8, a lot of times it comes out when we start to tear. So the smaller, the, the better off it is. But if you get it too small, then you can't pull it out. So I'm going to go up to about a 2.2 here. And we're going to sew. And then I just lift my thread and roll it back to the next one. And then we're going to pull it over to this one. Then we're going to lift, pull it over to this one. Now some people like to use a contrasting thread. I just, I like to do the TRP lines as soon as I get through sewing, because I I hate going back and having to sew TRP lines on 40 different units at the same time. So I like to just finish it up as, and then the block's done. So take this and we're going to cut all the threads on the inside. You don't need to worry about cutting along the outside because those threads are going to get trimmed off around the edges when we do the, when we do the trimming. I have three curved edges. I have smart corners on two of my corner, on two of the points that we have to pay attention to. And then this is a curved edge. And right along here, it's straight. So we're going to start with the straight ruler first. And you're going to place it on the outside line, the perimeter of your unit. And you're going to cut straight. Then you're going to trim that top. This is what we call our smart corner. So that's a smart corner. And then we're going to place this. Trim that. Place it along here. We're going to get this smart corner cut and those smart corners are really important because you have a lot of angles in this quilt and when you start putting the blocks together all of these smart corners that we've cut on these points are going to match up to the other blocks when you fit them together now I'm going to take and I'm going to just use my curved ruler and it starts out straight And it actually goes, it's straight up to where that first TRP line is. So I'm going to come back and trim a little bit better. And then we're going to take the curved ruler. And we're going to trim. And now our unit is done. We're not going to remove the paper until we're actually ready to start sewing. we're going to set this aside and now we're going to go back to bag J1 which is the curved piecing and we're going to get our instructions and I'm going to separate these out and I'm just going to make one unit but on this piece these go together, so I have my two contrasting colors and this unit here, these two colors go together. So I have my dark brown and my light one, and then I have a light color and a dark brown there. So I'm going to set this group aside, and we're just going to make one. These are pretty simple to do. In your instructions, the first thing it's going to tell you to do is paste, 
place the glue on the back side of the paper and I am going to use my repositionable glue and I'm going to just run that along that back side And then we're going to look at um, step two is going to tell us how to position that. And it goes on just like this. Okay, so it's going to cover the whole piece. The next step that we have here is it tells us to sew a TRP line. Uh, does it tell me to do the TRP line? No, it should tell me to do my basting stitch, which I have a basting stitch, and then it says to sew those two RP lines. So we're going to sew on the basting line. And again, the basting line doesn't really matter. I'm going to just do it about 1.9 because I'm going to cut that off. So we're going to sew on the basting line first. And it actually says basting stitch line one on your papers, just so if you're confused what a basting line is and where you're sewing. Now we're going to sew on the TRP line and on this one there's a little dot there and I'm actually going to sew only sew part way up on that. I'm just going to sew to the basing line and stop. And I'm going to pick this other TRP line back just a little bit and find a seam ripper. I'm not finding my seam ripper, so I'm going to use my rotary cutter. That worked. Okay, so I have to sew two TRP lines on these pieces, and I only have one template. So what I'm going to do is just fold, and this is the right side of the fabric. So I'm going to fold this. And sometimes you don't have to sew those, but I'm going to sew, and the reason why is because when I get done trimming, I need the TRP line on this piece. So we're going to fold that back, and I'm just going to crease that line. I'm going to pull this out of the way because it's got that repositionable glue on it. And we're just going to sew across that. So you can see how I sewed right across that fold there. Now we're going to take this and we're going to do the other one. And I'm going to fold it on that line, which I did. And I'm going to grab a I have a white chalk and I'm just going to mark this. There we go. Now we can remove that and we're going to sew the other one. I'm going to cut the threads off of it. Okay, so 
This is the top side. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our glue pin, which is right here, and I'm going to run that glue pin just to the right side of that TRP line. And I'm going to run that all the way the length of that basting stitch. So I said the left side of the TRP line. I meant the left side of the basting stitch. And I mean the right side. Should we start that over again and say... You're going to run your glues right along the right side of that basting line. Now I'm going to flip this piece over and I'm going to match up the raw edges of my brown vein up to the basting line. So I've got that. And then you're just going to bring it all the way down. And then we're going to run this one. So that's what it's going to look like. So my basting line's right along this edge where I glued that the vein onto. So then we're going to go to the steam iron. And I'm just going to touch this a little bit with some steam. And that'll kind of flatten down that vein just a little bit. The more steam you have, it will just shrink that down to where it fits tight against your fabric. But it's good enough for what we're going to do right now. Okay, so now we're going to flip this over. And our base, our instructions tell us that we're going to come back and we're going to sew on sew line two. I'm going to cut. Get rid of some threads there. And I'm going to put this at my machine. Start at the end. And we're going to sew on sew line two. And I'm going to just lift the fabric. I'm going to put my finger between the brown fabric and the uh, lighter fabric and just run my hand in front of it. So I'm running my finger right along the sew line. And we just lift that. And your pressure, your feed dogs will actually pull that brown fabric through and you won't get any puckers underneath there. If you put it, your hand on like that, then you're going to end up with pleats in that vein. So just hold it up. When we're done, we're going to cut our threads. And so now you can see the stitch line. And in your instructions, it tells you all of these steps. But I know from experience that it's confusing to people the first time they do this. So now we're going to take this and we're actually going to go to the iron and we're going to press that piece back so you can tell that our TRP lines are matching up. And see how nice that presses down? Now we're going to flip it over. And we're going to trim. I'm going to start right along this edge. I'm trimming around the perimeter. Right now I'm on the curved edge. Now we're going to grab our straight ruler. Trim the smart corners okay. 
Now when we flip it over, it looks like we have a piece that's finished and we have a really nice vein. It lays down really flat. The only problem is if we look this, if we lift this brown piece of fabric, the vein, you're going to notice that you have another layer underneath there. So what you're going to do is take your rotary cutter and you're going to cut just to the inside of that basting line because you want to cut it off. And then I'm going to cut that little corner there. That's a smart corner, so I'm going to clip that off. And so see, I cut that off. Now my piece is the exact size that I need. So our next step here is to remove the foundation paper. And I'm going to remove it from this piece. On this piece, you're going to start with the very last section and you just move everything, remove all the paper in descending order from the largest section number back to the first. And it takes a little bit of time. The best time to do this is when you're watching a movie or something. Just put a stack of them in front of you and start removing. You guys will find there's a lot of instructors out there that'll tell you to leave the paper on when you sew your units together. I really don't like doing that. I prefer to remove all the fab or the paper from the fabric and just sew the two layers of fabric together. It presses down a lot better for you and it actually fits together better for you. When you have all of these little pieces in the middle, if you'll get yourself a little pair of tweezers, you can actually just pull those pieces off. And another little trick that I'm going to show you, since I have one here, is if you have a purple thing, you can actually take your purple thing and slip it right underneath the edge of that paper and pull that away from the seam allowance. Then you can crease the seam allowance, just crease the paper, and that tears off really nice. So those are just, everybody's always trying to find a better way to remove the paper. And I'm not sure if any of them are better, but you have to get it off. <laughs> If your stitch length is too large, when you uh, assembled all of your pieces, you're going to find that it doesn't tear off near as well. But the other thing that causes the paper not to tear is when you're tearing on grain line, the paper tears really nice, but when you're tearing against the grain line on the paper, then it doesn't tear so nice. And your newsprint does, all paper does have a grain line, just like, like fabric. So. Okay, so now we're going to get rid of this mess. And one thing that I will suggest is when you're removing the paper, I like to remove the paper from all the pieces other than just one, and then I'll leave the paper on one section. That way when I come back and I start assembling my blocks, it'll tell me what that block or that unit is. So it might be a left unit or a right unit. And that's hard to tell sometimes after all the paper is gone. So just leave one unit with your paper on and remove the paper from everything else. And I think we're ready to sew these together. We're going to take those pieces, and it fits together just like that. 
So I'm going to grab my glue pen, and the very first thing I'm going to find is my TRP lines. So I have one here and one here. Those are going to match. So we're going to take, and I'm going to put a little bit of glue right along that edge. And then I'm going to match that one. And then I'm going to roll this one over and match this one. All right. So on this particular piece, what I want to show you is as I try to run this curve around, see all, how all my seams are sticking out. I have a little pair of scissors and they're a curved applique pair. What I like to do is come down here and just take that and clean off those points. I do this right before I get ready to sew. That way I don't have to worry about the stitches backing out on me too soon. Okay, so we've got the two, we've got it matched at the two TRP lines. Now I'm going to come over here onto this end and we're going to match that smart corner and it should fit perfectly right around the corner of that piece and then we're going to glue it back to where it hits the TRP line. Now we're going to do this one. So I'm going to put my glue right along the edge and then we're going to match up the smart corners and again that's going to be a perfect match around that corner and then I'm going to work that curve back and get all my raw edges matching. Once I get that done then I come back and I finish up the center. Just pushes it right into place and I have a perfect match. Now we're going to just go to our machine and we're going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance along that edge. So I'm going to show you another little trick. A lot of our machines nowadays, they have wider feet and sometimes you can't get your hands underneath there. And when you start to stitch on a curve like this, the thread will get caught and it'll pull the fabric down into the hole on your pressure foot. So what I like to do is start with a little piece of paper and I just start sewing on the paper get four or five stitches started. Then I take this and I lay that right on my paper, lift my pressure foot. Oh, my thread needle came unthreaded. So we're going to have to fix that before I can show you. And I'm going to have to thread it with my eye because I can't see the needle threader when I'm standing up. There we go. So we're going to do that again. Start sewing with the paper, four or five stitches. So a little bit further, there we go. You want the concave on the top and the convex piece on the bottom, right? And then you're going to sew. Now, one thing I want you to watch out for is if you didn't trim this seam down very well when you trimmed off the um, basting stitch, you might end up, it might end up being in there too far, so you may want to kind of finger press this the other direction before you start sewing, because then your pressure foot will lay flatter on that piece. So I'm just going to fold that back to get that started. And... Yeah. 
So I folded the seam underneath it to that direction, and that gives me enough room for my pressure foot to lay flat on the fabric. Otherwise, my pressure foot would be tipped. And when you do curve piecing, if you have a needle down position, you should have it in the needle down position. So when it stops, you're allowed to lift the pressure foot and readjust if you need to. So on this end, I actually s did a quarter inch and I sewed right into the point of that smart corner on this particular piece. When you, before you remove the paper from a unit, if you actually look at it, you can tell whether or not this seam has to stop halfway in between or whether it comes right down on the point. And you just need to be aware of that so that when you do that when you sew that seam you know where to stop on that. So I'm right on the point there. Now I'm going to get rid of this paper underneath here and I have to make a decision whether or not I want to press everything both of the seams in or whether I want to press one seam this way and the other seam this way. And that decision has been made in your instructions so um, and it should tell us on the back page whether there's any repressing. And on the back page it actually shows that I'm pressing this one in and this one goes towards that. If you want to change that, you can change it. It's not a big deal. Um, I like to press it, sometimes I like to press so that I can actually have opposing seams and other times I just press because it's easier when you have a small area like that to match that up if you have the seams going in the same direction. So, But there's a lot of people that would prefer to actually press that in, especially a machine quilter, because then they're going to be able to stitch on the ditch of both sides of that uh, vein, and they don't have to. It's just a lot easier, and it looks really good to do that. So you, have, you really have options there. So we're going to take this over, and I'm going to press it. And there's our finished unit. And the palm leaf is done. And on my quilt, I'm going to actually show you where this is at. This is actually sits right here on the quilt. Now, I'm going to bring one more thing to your attention. When we designed this unit here, we actually designed it so that when these veins come together, they actually don't come to the point. They actually set off the point about an inch, so it makes it really easy to assemble that center piece there. I think we're done with our video for this unit. And you're just going to leave this. I will tell you that once you get these two pieces together, it is okay to come in here and remove the uh, basting stitches. And I usually use a seam ripper and I cut the thread right here and then I pull it out with my um, tweezers. But for some reason I am not finding my seam ripper. So you don't get to watch me do that today. Talk to you later.